Today we're going over a type of radio that's been advertised everywhere and gaining popularity called a POC radio. Are these the future of comms? Do they work off-grid and have worldwide range? Should you ditch your ham and GMRS radio for one of these? In this video we'll break down exactly what they are, cut through all of the misleading marketing BS, and give you the straight facts so you can decide if these belong in your comm plan. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. So first off, what is a POC radio? POC stands for push to talk over cellular, which means these radios work over cell towers using SIM cards, just like your phone does. And before you click away thinking, well, that's useless, I'll just use my phone, there are some benefits over most cell phones that make POC radios something to consider that we'll cover here in a moment. Now you can basically get these in two ways. The most convenient is purchasing POC radios from a service provider, which will include SIM cards for each radio that you can pop in and start using the service. These will usually connect to the provider's own server for the devices to communicate with each other, either via a group for talking to multiple people at once or direct communication with another radio. Now these are generally only going to be able to communicate with other POC radios from the same provider. So if you have one from Poclink like I have here, you can only communicate with other Poclink radios. The second way to go about getting POC radios is more of a do-it-yourself method. Here you purchase a standalone radio with no SIM card or service, so first you'll have to provide your own data-only SIM card. You can often get these from your cell phone provider, but usually at an additional cost to your phone plan. Then you have to figure out what to do about the communication server side of everything since you won't have a service provider providing this. The most common thing people do for this is use Zello, which if you're unfamiliar, this is an app that you can install on your phone and use it for push-to-talk style communication. This of course means that you'll need a POC radio that can install apps. You can often find POC radios that are running Android and will allow you to install apps like Zello or even Echolink for those of you with ham radio licenses and want to talk through Echolink capable repeaters. Now earlier I mentioned that there are some benefits over most cell phones that make POC radios something to consider. One big one is that many of them can use the towers of multiple cell phone carriers. For example, this radio I have here, which was sent over from Poclink to review, which we'll have a video on this soon. But they're one of the radio providers that can connect to multiple carriers. And looking at their website, it looks like they use AT&T, T-Mobile, and Verizon towers. Now you may be wondering, why does that even matter? Well, think about the massive AT&T outage not too long ago back in 2024. According to this report by the FCC, it affected users in all 50 states, took 12 hours to fix, blocked over 92 million calls, and even prevented 25,000 attempts to reach 911. So if your cell phone provider was AT&T, you'd be out of luck trying to communicate during that time. But with a POC radio that can use multiple cell phone carriers, if one network goes down, you could still connect through another carrier as long as you're within range of its towers. Now that's a big improvement over a single carrier cell phone. Now if there's a major grid down event where all the cell networks go down, a traditional POC radio becomes a paperweight. And that's why these will never replace something like ham or GMR's radio for true off-grid communication. Now there are some models of these POC radios that are hybrid POC and analog radios that do add some off-grid capability. In the case of this POC1 Ultra from Poclink, this basically has an FRS radio built in to allow for communication where there is no cell phone towers available. Now I do wish this had a repeater capable GMRS radio instead of FRS, but we'll get into that in our review of this device. Another benefit of these compared to cell phones is the easy and convenient group communication. When using these radios you can either talk directly to another radio or via a group channel with multiple people in it. So if you have a team you're working with or multiple family members you're communicating with, you can quickly talk to all of them at once instead of trying to reach all of them individually. So now that we know what these are, we need to cut through a lot of BS marketing and some downright misleading information and claims that you may run into when you start looking into one of these from a provider. 
Now, as far as providers go, PocLink seems to be one of the more upfront and honest ones out there when it comes to these more budget-friendly POC radio providers. And is the only reason I agreed to review their new dual-mode POC and analog radio. I won't call out the bad ones here, but I'm sure you've seen them if you've looked into these radios in the past. The first claim you'll see a lot is no monthly fee. And this claim is technically true for the ones that claim it, but this is where a lot of people get tripped up. The reason there's no monthly fee is because it's a yearly fee, which they're not upfront about, and that info is hidden in the fine print. The first year is usually included with the radio, but after that, you have to purchase another year of service to continue using them. Because of this no monthly fee marketing, many people have been misled to think that the radio is free to use once you buy it, but you must remember that these radios rely on cell phone towers, and that access costs money. These POC radio providers have to pay carriers like Verizon, AT&T, and T-Mobile to use their towers, so of course they pass that cost along to you in the form of a SIM card. So always be sure to read the fine print when looking into these. Speaking of this yearly fee, PocLink appears to be the least expensive from what I've seen at 29 bucks a year compared to the competitors, which come in between 50 to 100 a year or so. Even at the high end, $100 is still way cheaper than a regular cell phone plan, so 29 bucks is honestly a pretty good deal for these. The next claim you'll sometimes see is that POC radios are better than cell phones because they use some sort of special technology. The truth is, at their core, these are just data-only 4G LTE devices with data-only SIM cards. Some marketing will claim that these are better since they use the data side of the network instead of the voice side, so they'll still work when the phone calls are overloaded. That may have been true years ago, but not anymore. Most modern 4G LTE phones use something called VOLTE, which stands for Voice Over LTE, and 5G phones use VONR which stands for Voice Over New Radio. Both of these protocols handle voice calls over the data connection. So in practice, your phone and these POC radios are essentially using the data connection to communicate. And even if that wasn't the case, when you're browsing the internet or even using apps like Zello for push-to-talk communication, you're using the data side of your cell phone service. So that different tech claim isn't really a selling point over a normal cell phone. As mentioned earlier, the real benefit to these compared to most cell phones is the ability to use the towers of multiple cell phone providers, and that's where these POC radios can stand apart from cell phones. The next common claim we'll see is unlimited range. Based on what we've covered so far, you probably already know why they make this claim. These connect to cell phone towers, which have connection to the internet, which of course allows for worldwide communication. So technically, yes, they do have worldwide range, but only as long as both parties are within range of a working cell phone tower and there's still an internet connection between them. So those were the major claims I wanted to go over. Now, what are some good use cases for these radios? Now, this is more of a personal use case, but if you've been a longtime viewer of the comms channel, you know that one of my hobbies is storm chasing. Now, I like to keep my eyes on the road during storm chasing, so I'll try to have someone back home keeping an eye on the radar and looking out for tornado warnings in other areas nearby that I can head to. I generally use the app we mentioned earlier called Zello for this, which is a voice communication app that uses PTT over the internet. That, of course, limits me to the cell phone towers that my carrier uses and also ties up my cell phone, which I like to have running radar apps on. Some of the other more traditional use cases are things I mentioned earlier, like having one of these as a backup communications device in the event that your primary cell phone carrier's towers go down, or for quick and easy normal day-to-day group communications for your team or family when there's no grid issues. Another good use case is for those of you who have children. You know that the internet is a terrible thing for them to use unsupervised, so these are a great and cheaper alternative to cell phones for them, so you can keep in touch with them while they're at school or out playing with their friends without giving them easy access to the cesspool that is the internet. Now, as mentioned earlier, these will never replace something like ham radio or GMRS during a major grid-down event, but there are plenty of other great use cases for these when the cell phone towers are still available that can make these a handy thing to have in your kit. 
That'll do it for this video and I hope you found it useful. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And stay tuned for our review of this, the Poclink POC1 Ultra. Hope to see you there. Thank you all and have a good one.